yes friend yeah so uh, very good morning and welcome to this geotechnical lecture series today we are going to discuss a new topic which is the part of unit 3 a stability of slopes if you see the earth embankments which is commonly required for many application such as railways roadways earth dams levis works etc this earth while you are making this various civil engineering application the stability of embankment slopes is very very uh, you can say the important to estimate and in this particular chapter we will going to see what are the different methods is available to find out the various stability of the slopes if i define a slide what is called as a failure or the slide of the slope then the failure of the mass of the soil which is located beneath the slope is called as the slide for example if you see this figure you can see this dotted line it is nothing but it is the portion where the failure is going to take place so this is basically you may say that it is the slide and if you see it involves the downward moments and the outward moments of the entire soil mass which participate into the failure so wherever the sliding will take place so if you see the failure of the soil which take place mainly due to two aspect the first is the action of the gravitational force and second is the seepage forces within the soil they may also fail due to the excavations undercutting of the foot like for example if you make an excavation somewhere here at the foot due to gradual disintegration of the structure of the soil slides may also occur almost in every conceivable manner slowly or suddenly with and without apparent provocation if you closely see this figure then this is a particular slope and this slope i'm assuming to fail with this particular sliding and this is a you can say that it is the failure plane so basically from this sliding zone this is the unsupported mass or this is the mass where actually the slope is going to be fail and this is the stable mass of the slope if you see this interaction between the unsupported mass and the supported mass at this particular juncture you will find lot of shear stresses and the shear strength will be generated which will becomes the basis for finding out the stability of the slope we will see in the subsequent uh, slides i will also demonstrate various causes of a slope failure for example if you see certain times you need to have erosion of the slope like for example this is the original slope and due to steepening is actually happening if you see the angle of this slope which is a flatter but when the erosion of this particular element will going to happen then this particular slope angle will become a steeper which is probably a more you can say the unstable slope if suppose you see the scouring generally in the embankment or nearer to the bank of the river you will find you can say this is the water body or the river and this particular river water current of the river water will also cause in the slope failure in the form of scouring certain times the rainfall rain if the rain occurs this rain will actually infiltrate into the soil the soil will become saturated and the seepage forces which act onto the soil which also one of the cause of slow failure similarly the earthquake forces will also can actually causes the slow failure similarly there are various stratifications if there is a weak stratum encountered during this stratification there is also one of the cause of 
slow failure. And similarly, if you put load in terms of any structures onto the crest of the slope, then you can say this downward forces which will be uh, increases and which actually accelerate the uh, slope failures. So these are the, some of the common causes of the slow failure and this may exist during the various applications. For example, you are making a road, then you need to cut the particular slope and during this you are stiffening, you can say the particular slopes and that particular slope may fail. So there are a number of causes during the various applications. Now, if you see every mass of the soil is bounded by the sloping surface, and it is subjected to shearing stress, as I said, on nearly all internal surfaces because the gravitational forces which tends to pull the upper portion of the mass, which is in the downward directions, towards a more nearly level surface. So if you want to do the analysis of the stability of slope, it has mainly a two parts. The first is, the determination of most severely stressed internal surfaces and magnitude of shearing stress to which it is subjected. And the second very important parameter that you need to determine is the shearing stress, shearing strength along the surface. The first is the shearing stress and second is the shearing strength along the surface. Shearing stress to which any slope can be subjected to is depending upon the various parameter like unit weight of the material, what is exactly the geometry of the slope, while shearing strength is also depending upon various parameter. For example, what is the characteristics of the slope soil, what is its density and what is the drainage conditions. Now, if I want to define a different types of slopes, then you can actually broadly classify the slopes into the two category. We are talking in terms of the soil slopes. So basically, the soil slope is having the two basic types. One is infinite slope and other is finite slope. If the slope represents the boundary surface of semi-infinite soil mass and the soil property of all identical depths below the surface are constant. It is called as the infinite slope. Again, I'm repeating. If slope represents the boundary condition of semi-infinite soil mass and soil properties for all identical depth below the surface are constant, it is called as infinite slope. Then what is called as the finite slope? If the slope is of limited extent, it is called as finite slope. Now generally, the slope extending to the infinity does not exist in the future, in, in, in the nature, sorry. Uh, however, certain long slope you can analyze with respect to infinite slopes. Examples of the finite slopes are many, like if you analyze the earth dam, if you analyze any earth embankment, if you analyze any road cuts or any type of slopes, which is a most examples of the finite slope. Today, we are going to see how the slopes of infinite in nature will be analyzed and how this infinite slopes uh, stability can be find out. So let's take an one case, like for an example, you can see in the figure, I will take the infinite slope AB, which is inclined to the horizontal with an angle I. So this is the slope, which is at inclined at an angle I. For infinite slope, the soil properties and the soil stresses on any plane parallel to this slope is identical and therefore the failure of the slope 
usually involves the sliding of the soil mass which is along the plane which is parallel to the slope angle at some depth so for example if i consider the sliding will take place along this line which is a cd which is at some depth below z so this is the cd is the sliding which will be taking place which is parallel to the slope angle since it is all the property of the soil which is identical below this particular surface so if you see further as i said the cd is represents the failure plane at a depth z below the surface consider if you consider the prism of the soil which is inclined length b so if you have this prism which has a width or a length b along the slope depth z below the identical surface you can see this depth z and the horizontal length of the prism if you say this is the inclined length then if you find out this horizontal length with this angle i then this length will be b cos i and its volume so if you want to find out the volume you can take you can say this into this so the b cos i into z multiplied with the density of the soil you will get the weight of the prism so the weight of the prism is equal to unit weight of the soil multiplied by the depth and the width which is b cos i if the vertical stress sigma z if i am taking which is acting at the base of this sliding fa failure or slides which is sigma z and if i calculate the value of sigma z which is a stress so then whatever the load of this prism which is been coming on to this divided by the area of this so then i can get the value of sigma z so stress is nothing but the force divided by the area so if i take the weight of the prism as a force which is nothing but the gamma z b cos i divided by b and if i take in the z direction which is in this direction which is 1 so b into 1 so this will be you can say the area so this b b will going to be cancelled so remaining will be gamma z cos i and which is the value of sigma z now if you go further then i will take the two components of this value of sigma z so this sigma z will depends will will actually resolved into the two components one is this which is perpendicular to the sliding plane which is sigma sigma and this is again perpendicular to this value of sigma which is the zone of shearing which is the tau so if i resolve this sigma z into the two component which is sigma and tau which looks like this so if i calculate the value of sigma and tau based on this angle this is the value this is the angle which is i so you can calculate the value of sigma sigma is nothing but sigma z cos i so this is your sigma z so value of sigma is sigma z cos i and tau f or a tau which is nothing but a shear stress or the shear strength which is nothing but the sigma z into sin i now if you put the value of sigma z what we have calculated in the earlier slide which is sigma z cos i multiplied by this cos i which becomes gamma z cos square i and tau f which is nothing but it is the shear strength which is nothing but sigma z sin i put the value of sigma z so sigma z is nothing but a gamma z cos i and you multiplied with the sin i you will get this particular equation now the tangential component tau is called as the shear stress which induces the failure along cd and which is resisted by the shear strength tau f of the soil so tau f is nothing but it is the shear strength which depends upon the various parameter which we we have described before that is type of soil right so basically the whatever the soil strength which can actually offer to this place so if you want to find out the stability and the stability you can find out in terms of the factor of safety so for example if i want to define a factor of safety it is nothing but it is the ratio of shear strength to the shear stress so if you say the shear strength is the component of tau f 
and the shear stress is the component of tau, then the ratio of tau f upon tau, which will give you the factor of safety. If this factor of safety is more than one, then you can say that it is the slope is stable. Of course, there are several parameters, several factor of safety has been suggested for the slope failure by the different agency or even in the IES code that we need to follow by considering some conservations. However, as for the analytical situation, you can say that if the ratio tau f upon tau is more than one, you can consider this particular slope is the stable slope. Let's go further. So now after this particular explanation, now let us take our two types of soil. Let's say the shear strength of the soil is depends upon the type of soil. And if I am consider a two types of soil, which is the cohesionless soil and the cohesive soil, I hope the, let us take the first case, which is in the case of cohesionless soil. Now let's see what is going to happen if I consider the cohesionless slope and if I want to find out the factor of safety of the slope to determine its stability. I hope you are all aware about the direct shear test and its failure envelope. If you can see the when you perform a direct shear test, basically you are going to draw a plot between normal stress and the shear stress and basically the failure envelope which will be looking like this. So for example, the OA, which is the strength envelope that you can actually retrieve by doing the direct shear test onto the soil. So if you see, as you are increasing the value of normal stress, your shear stress value will increase and you will get this particular failure envelope or you may say the strength envelope. And from this, if you take the slope of this, you will get the value of internal friction for the cohesionless soil. And similarly, when it touches to the y-axis, which will give you the cohesion. Since this is a cohesionless soil, this failure envelope will touches to the zero. So basically, the cohesionless soil is having the cohesion of zero. Okay, so this is, we can derive from the soil property by doing ex exact experiment in the laboratory. So for example, if I consider the OA is the failure envelope for the cohesionless soil, and if you take the equation of this, so like the equation of the failure envelope, which is tau f is equal to C plus sigma 10 phi, where the since this is the soil is the cohesionless soil, I will put the C is equal to zero, then this tau f will going to become sigma 10 phi. Now, if I if I consider OB, which represents the locus of stress component which we have derived earlier in the slides which is sigma and tau which is acting on the critical surface or the sliding surface cd for various value of z so if i consider this ratio of sigma and tau what you have calculated then this ratio will comes out that is a cos i and the sin i so basically it is nothing but the cot i so since for any type of slope, slope, the value of Z, which will be different. Like for example, if I see this particular slope, this value of Z, I don't know where the sliding is going to take place. So basically the sliding may take place from here, from here, from here, where is exactly the critical slides? That is, I don't know. So the value of Z may vary. And if the value of Z will vary, then the value of you can say the sigma and tau is going to, going to affect based upon that because you have already calculated the value of here. Since the z is a variable, this value is also going to be affected, right? And you don't know where is exactly the depth z where the critical surface or you can say the sliding will take place. So this parameter is a variable. So the z is the variable. But what is not variable is, what is not changing is, that is the value of i. But since if you take the ratio of this cos i upon sin i, this ratio is comes about the constant. So the parameter, which is the inclination of the slope is very, very important parameter while you are analyzing the cohesionless slope for, you can say the infinite slope failure. Now let's see if this OB, which is drawn at the inclination, 
i with the sig uh, sigma axis like this axis and therefore this equation will represents like sigma is equal to tau into cot i you can see this equation this is the equation sigma is equal to tau this will go in this side so sigma is equal to tau into cot i so this will come here and similarly if i take the tau here then the tau is equal to sigma into tan i now it's very clear from this particular graph for example this is my failure envelope which depends upon the soil type and if you do the perform the direct shear test you will get you can say this failure envelope for any type of soil now if you want to analyze a slope and if you plot this particular graph ab with the inclination of the slope as we have discussed the inclination of the slope is the i and if i plot this curve and if you can calculate the value of sigma and tau at any particular depth and if this inclination i sorry if this inclination i is less than the value of you can say the phi then i would consider it is the stable slope but if this inclination i will increases the value of phi then the slope will become unstable since this value of tau if you just extend this particular line then the value of tau will increase the value of tau wave means the shear stress will increase the shear strength in this case so tau is greater than tau wave in this case the slope is become unstable while in this case you can see the sigma sigma is the same but the tau is less than tau wave and in this case the shear stress is not reaching to the strength of the soil and since the slope is stable so this is the very nice explanation so the slope failure in the case of infinite slope in the case of cohesionless soil it is depending upon the slope angle i so as you can say crudely if the slope angle is less than the value of internal friction your slope is become stable if the slope angle will increases the angle of internal friction there is a chances that the slope will become unstable it's very good, very simple okay now let's go further so for a given value of stress as i as i explain the same thing has been written for the given value of normal stress the sigma failure does not occur as long as the tau is smaller than the tau wave which is a shear strength so long as the i is less than the phi for the limiting case of the stability the angle of slope is referred to as the angle of repose and the factor of safety against the sliding is given by f is equal to tau f upon tau which is nothing but tau is the representation of internal friction which is 10 phi and the tau is the angle of slope angle so this is 10 i so this ratio which will give you the factor of safety in the case of infinite slope in the case of cohesionless soil now let's take one more variable that is the if this particular cohesionless soil slope which is submerged condition so if the slope is submerged the bulk unit weight gamma should be replaced with the submerged unit weight gamma dash so sigma and tau is also accordingly changed with the changes in the density as earlier we have the density which is the bulk unit weight now in place of you can see the bulk unit weight because of the submergence of the soil we are taking gamma dash which is my submerged density so the phi is also going to be determined according to the submerged condition so my earlier equation will reduce to sigma i am replacing the gamma with the gamma dash so which will be gamma dash z cos square i and tau is gamma z gamma dash z cos i into sin i so if i calculate the factor of safety with this usual equation the f is equal to tau f upon tau then you will get this particular equation which is gamma z cos square i into 10 phi upon gamma z, z gamma dash z sin i into cos i again the ratio will be the same which is 10 phi upon cos i so this shows that the factor of safety of of the submerged slope is also the same as in the case of dry state it is not going to be changed as the density is going to be changed similarly if i consider the steady seepage if the seepage is occurring parallel to the slide in this case what is going to be happen so when the seepage force will act when the soil is set become saturated what is exactly 
the how you can actually determine the slope failure. So if in the infinite slope is subjected to a steady seepage conditions, then the W of the soil or the weight of the prisms, which will be taken corresponding to the saturated soil unit weight of the soil. So if I take the weight of the prism, which you have calculated earlier, which is I'm replacing gamma with the gamma saturated. So this becomes gamma saturated Z into B into cosine. Similarly, sigma Z is equal to W upon the area means force upon the area. So similarly, this B, B will go on. So this value will come. So gamma saturated Z into cos I. If you find out the component of the sigma Z, which is nothing but the sigma Z cos I and sigma Z sin I, if you put those values in this, then you will get this particular equation, which is gamma saturated Z cos square I. And similarly, gamma saturated Z cos I into sin I. Addition to this, there is an upward pressure since it is, you can say the seepage force will act so that the pore water pressure will also generate from the bottom. So in this case, the pore water pressures which will be act against the normal forces in a similar direction and opposite to the normal forces. So the U is equal to, if you see this gamma saturated has been replaced with the density of water. So gamma W, Z is remain same, cos square I and cos square I remain same. So this is my pore water pressure. So this is my pore water pressure, which has been acting from the downward to the upward side against the normal forces. So in this case, if you see, this is the exact uh, how this forces will act. This is the normal force. This is a pore water pressure and the sliding pressure, which is a tau F, which has been acting on this particular infinite slope because of the steady seepage conditions. So if I consider this component, then this will be the effective parameter. Effective parameter is nothing but the sigma dash, which is my effective stress, is nothing but the total stress minus the pore water pressure. If I calculate this, then this value will be gamma saturated. You have calculated the value of sigma. Just put those values. Value of U is also you calculated. So put those values. Gamma saturated minus gamma W will becomes the gamma dash, which is nothing but the submerged density. So this, uh, you can uh, take this particular value common. So this will be gamma Z, gamma dash into Z cos square I. And if you take the ratio of this, so the F is equal to tau F upon tau. If you put the value of those things, then you will get this particular equation, which is the gamma dash upon gamma saturated 10 phi upon 10 i. Here, the ratio of submerged density to the saturated density is generally a half, right? Which is a common fact. And the factor of safety is calculated, which is nearly one half when the seepage pressure is parallel to the slope. However, it is also depending upon the value of two parameter, which is phi and i, right? So which is very, very similar. So I am keeping this particular lecture up to this. Uh, tomorrow we will discuss, uh, you can say the finite slopes, not tomorrow, day after tomorrow. We will discuss the, uh, for the finite slope, in the case of cohesive soil, what exactly the uh, different values will change. Uh, now I will invite some of the, if you have certain, uh, you can say uh, certain uh, query or the questions if you have. Yes, uh, someone is writing, I'm just putting up, you can say, I will just see the questions if someone has asked in the chat box. Uh, someone has right path has written, explain what is the infinite slope. As I explained, infinite slope is the slope which has been extended to the infinite uh, directions. However, the soil below the infinite slope is identical, means we are considering the homogeneous mass of the soil below the uh, uh, soil mass in the case of infinite slope. If the length is uh, length of the slope is limited to the certain extent, which we are considering as a finite slope. Okay. Uh, uh, 
Shruti is asking, sir, will be the gamma in bottom two? Probably I'm not understanding where you are exactly uh, uh, trying to say. Probably you can actually refer the book of Punmiya in this and uh, you please see that because I'm not getting exactly what, where is the place you are actually talking about. Uh, if still you have a doubt, you please actually discuss with me in the next lecture uh, with the specific location. Is always possible that the water is parallel to the slope? Uh, no, it is not always possible the water is parallel to the slope. But since we are considering this is the infinite slope and uh, the soil beneath the, uh, you can say the uh, infinite slope is identical. And that is why we are considering the water will go along the plate. Water will go along the plate. Along the slope. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other questions? So if you do not have any questions, then we will stop this particular lecture and we will discuss, you can say for the next, next term again on 930 day after tomorrow, I will same way. I will actually post you the, uh, my, uh, zoom meeting, uh, details. Thank you very much for joining.